Okay. So in this problem, problem 49, uh, we have a continuous charge distribution in the form of a circular arc of radius r, and it extends over some angle two theta naught, and we are given the linear charge density for this circular arc, and we are being asked the electric field uh, at the point that corresponds to the center of the circular arc. Okay. Now, well, first of all, one thing we can immediately notice that this problem is completely symmetric with respect to up and down. Right? So uh, up is perfectly the same as down, so for every piece that produces an electric field that has a downward component over here, there's going to be a corresponding piece that's going to produce the exact same upward vertical component, and they are just going to cancel, and the resulting electric field is going to be just horizontal. Yeah? So what we need to do is to calculate this uh, electric field due to little parts. So let's take one little part, one the cube here, and calculate the only horizontal component of the electric field and add those up, or in this case, we're going to take an integral. Okay? So what kind of uh, what kind of uh, electric field are we talking about? So let's just connect it over here. This is going to produce some dE this way, and it's going to have a dEx as such. Okay? And that uh, dEx is going to be is just cosine theta times dE. And that dE, the infinitesimal electric field due to this dQ, is going to be the same uh, for all of them because they are all equidistant. So remember that dE is the magnitude of the electric field because they are all equidistant from this point. It's just going to be cosine theta, one over four pi epsilon naught dQ divided by uh, capital R squared. Okay? And the total electric field due to all of this circular ring is simply going to be just x component of the electric field and this is going to be theta going from zero to theta naught dx. I, I don't need to go from minus theta naught to theta naught. That's not necessary. I can just go from zero to theta naught and multiply by two because the contribution, the horizontal contribution of this part is going to be the same as the horizontal contribution of this part. Yeah. You can do it either way, it doesn't make a difference, but uh, I think this uh, emphasizes the symmetry a little bit more. So because we are integrating over theta, what we need to do is that we need to write this dq in terms of that theta, and then we already have this theta over there, but we can take out this four pi epsilon naught in R square outside the integral sign. So how do we write that dq in terms of theta? Well, dq, because this is a one-dimensional continuous charge distribution, is just going to be lambda dl, uh, dl being the length of this little segment that we are taking and adding up. And that dl can be written in terms of theta. Okay. It's just r times d theta. A circular arc, if you're using uh, if you're using uh, radians for angles, is just equal to the, the length of the circular arc is equal to the radius times the angle corresponding to that arc. So this is the angle corresponding to the arc, d theta, and this is the uh, radius. All right, so what you need to do is put this in. So as I said, these can be taken out. To, but these need to be kept. Theta and one of the r's, in fact, lambda r can be taken out. And that's going to give you the x component of the uh, of the electric field, which is all we need. By the way, I have chosen x to be the horizontal component. I forgot to mention that. Uh, it gives the horizontal component of the electric field, and the vertical component gets cancelled by symmetry. 